designer, director, producer, executive, innovator. John Wu, tell me the one word that describes who you are. I'd have to say um, curious. John Wu, tell me a little bit about yourself. Why Asian Cinevision? I came to New York from Seattle in 1976, right after I graduated from college. And um, in New York in the, in the late 70s and the early 80s, there was this East Village um, uh, art movement. And, um, and so I came here to be a famous artist. Is and this the Patti Smith time, just kids, that whole movement of energy and creativity? Yeah, the East Village Galleries, uh, Julian Schnabel and, and that crowd. Um, and um, it was just an incredible creative time for people who were, who, because people were coming from all over the place, people who uh, wanted to work in, in creative industries, who wanted to, to, um, to just be in New York at that time. ACV, which stands for Asian Cinevision, is um, it's a wonderful organization. It's, uh, it's existed for 35 years here in New York City, uh, and it is the producer of the um, New York Asian American International Film Festival, which was the first of its kind in the country. Tell me who was the first person to have the idea to create ACV? Um, well, it all goes back to an organization called uh, Basement Workshop. <clears throat> basement Workshop was started in a basement on Elizabeth Street in 1971, <clears throat> and and it started out as a as a um, social service slash cultural arts organization, where people were creating images and music and dance and and moving images that we weren't seeing in the in the mainstream media. I think that there was a an awareness in the community that we now call Asian American, that the representation of Asian, Asians and Asian Americans uh, was controlled by people, I guess, who looked like me. But what happened is in the 70s and 80s, there was this huge amount of activism around ethnicity and awareness of self and who you are and understanding yourself if you were a minority in a majority white world, what did that mean? Constructing a sense of yourself. All of this was happening across Latinos, um, Native Americans to a lesser extent, African Americans, and then, and it was natural that there should be this other movement that was Asian Americans saying, well, who are we? And, what are the stories that we tell, you know, that we want to tell about ourselves? The other side of the basement um, organization was the social service activist side. In 1975, they had a, a political split, and the artist group kept the name of Basement Workshop, and the, and the social activists moved across the street on East Broadway and started Asian Cinevision at that time, which was being what was called uh, CCTV, Chinese Cable Television. And CCTV or ACV at that time got their hands on these just, these brand new handheld um, portable um, video cameras and they took to the streets and started recording things like police demonstrations, like labor demonstrations, like, um, like town hall meetings. So you were recording history as it was happening? Yes. Well, these were the founders of of ACV, Asian, Asian right. Cinevision. At the time, these community activists, the founders of ACV, the people at Basement, these were all artists, media people, activists, who um, saw the lack of Asian faces on television or in the movies. We had your Susie Wongs, we had your, your Hop Sings, we had, you were either a bar girl or you were a, a servant. Um, and the images that you were seeing from Asian movies were like the Shaw Brothers, Saturday afternoon, um, Kung Fu um, uh, movie hour. And so they looked at that and they said, that's not me. 
if we're going to be able to want to see ourselves um, in the media, that we're going to have to create it ourselves. We're going to have to write our own stories. We're going to have to produce it. We're going to have to train um, um, people with skills to be able to produce these stories. Do you think that contributed to the success early on? Of course, yes. Um, we didn't call it do it yourself then because all these organizations were collectives. And so, um, so for example, there, um, there was a film produced early on in um, ACV's history called Spikes to Spindles um, by the, um, um, the, doc the famous documentary filmmaker Christine Choi. And, and it really chronicled those times. It was made in the late 70s. Everybody worked on it. And, and it was shot in film, and what they, what they did was they ran around Chinatown and, recording, and recording, recorded these um, kind of conflicts between like the police and the community, between the, um, um, the Chinese community leaders and the up-and-coming up and coming activists who wanted their voices heard. And so it was pieces of media like that which really were able to be distributed throughout the um, uh, throughout the country, throughout the world, and remember, it was also the um, uh, the time when the video cassette was was invented, and so you could take this media and send it to wherever you wanted to send it, and people could watch it. John is quietly brilliant. But as much as being quietly brilliant uh, and talented, he is a, 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 like a walking archive of the history of Chinatown during that period and of the history and the blossoming of Asian American consciousness and just the, the concept of what it is to be Asian in America or Asian American. He has all that history. He's a walking history book. When I look back on this time with you and you telling me about it, it feels incredibly exciting and a lot of changes, social changes, uh, a lot of movements, uh, you know, the civil rights movements, just, uh, you know, how, all of this stuff is going on at once. Did you, at the time, feel this sort of uh, unmistakable excitement where you've got to be a part of this organization and the person bringing you in is, you know, you're in that sort of space where you think, wow, this is going to change society well I don't I didn't I didn't and don't think of it like larger terms like that okay. but here was this community that I fell into which was creative was um, was um, they were exciting they were like all my age and and we all had the same sensibilities and you know we um, uh, we did the work um, we socialized together and here you just meet um, just a broad swath of people that you've, I've had met in my life. So especially with the, you know, the artistic immigrant community and people were coming from, from all over the world and they had these you know, visions of creating things and, and of, of making, making a statement. Well, tell me about the organization's growth. The growth of its vision seems quite extraordinary. I mean, there was a pretty broad scope to begin with. Um, and tell me how it expanded over that, you know, the first couple of decades. In 1978, um, a group of filmmakers, scholars, um, writers, cultural critics, they got together and they said, you know, um, we don't have a, a showcase um, um, in the media where we can actually collectively um, <clears throat> view and screen um, um, media movies film and video at that time um, by, for, or about us. And 1978 was the first uh, Asian American International Film Festival. Did ACV and sponsor that? ACV created that. Created it, okay. Yeah. And it, it was people like uh, Larry Chua, like Somi Roy, um, uh, Daryl Chin, B. Sung, Christine Choi, as I spoke of before, who got together and said, okay, let's organize an Asian American film festival. They didn't, I mean, everybody knew somebody who was, who was making films, right? But nobody knew the kind of response that they would get. They didn't know how many filmmakers out there who were making um, 
films or videos that were dealing with the Asian American identity or the Asian American experience. Was that the purpose? Was it to be about the Asian American identity or was it just uh, anybody who was Asian American who was creating content? Um, absolutely. It was, at that time, it was, it was a time when Asian American identity or Asian America itself was being defined. And so getting these points of view from all over the country and they put out a call for submissions and they got something like 60 films, wow. 60 short films. And, um, and even got a few submissions from, from Asia. And so the first Asian American International Film Festival was held at Hen Henry Street and it was over a weekend. And the Henry Street over, Settlement, is yeah, that right? over three days. And, and it was the first showcase in the country that devoted itself to, to, um, to screening the film and video works of, of um, filmmakers of Asian descent. Did the Western media come to that? Um, yes. At the time, um, there, was, there were San Francisco organizations, there were Los Angeles organizations, and people were in touch with each other because people traveled around to the different activist centers to see what they were doing to exchange ideas. People were friends. At the time, did that feel significant that the Western media had decided to feature Asian America? Because it seems like you were looking for a voice on a largely European stage, and suddenly you have the voice. You've even got a microphone. I mean, the Western media has arrived to hear what you have to say. Well, people were doing different things at, at the time. And, you know, and, you know, the mainstream media um, was curious, but there weren't a lot of you know, Asian Americans working in the, in, the, um, um, in the major media outlets. And it was because prejudiced and still dominated, you know, we were in this kind of minority world. Right. And people were knocking at the doors and people were demanding representation and and Who was demanding representation? That's we all were. We right. all were. Every organization, I mean, every ethnic group had its, you know, its umbrella of, of, of activist organizations. He calmly keeps going. He has a level of persistence while staying creative. You know, there's this temptation when you're working hard and you're persisting to, to let the tiredness get to you. And when you have done what he's done and accomplished what he's done, you have to wonder, you have to think that, that that's a special, that's something about him that has allowed him to do it, to just keep persisting, to keep his vision, to keep the vision and mission of ACV in mind, to not lose hold of that but also not get tired. We're still telling stories about the Asian American experience, and, and, but now with um, film and video and all kinds of media being, being a global medium, we get, every year when we put our call for entries, we get three to 400 entries from around the world. From Compared across- to 60 when you first started. Yes, from the, across the Asian diaspora. And we're talking about right. Asians in Russia, Asians in Denmark, Asians in Kenya, Asians in Johannesburg, Asians in, in Buenos Aires. We're talking about the Asian experience throughout the globe. And you just see the way that, that when the stories come in, what people are looking at, what they care about, what stories are they writing. What do they care about? Um, What's the theme now? If there's one particular theme that's sort of threading through the experience now, what is it? I think it's about inclusion about inclusion in, in the global voice. Hmm. How has, over the last 35 years, because I believe ACV is now 35 years old, how has this inclusion been impacted by identity? Because it sounds like identity was incredibly important early on. Has there been a melting pot of identities in the last 35 years amongst Pan-Asia? Well, anthropologists wouldn't call it, a, they ceased to calling it, it a melting pot. I mean, mostly look at it like a, like a salad, like a crazy salad. And so in with the younger generation, what we call the 1.5 generation, um, people who were born there in Asia and who came here like 
up to like um, about the age five, and they grew up speaking English. They grew up going to American schools. Um, they don't. We're, we're not asking everybody to be the same. We're asking for you know, for people to take what to bring what's valuable and keep it, and and to bring what's different and share that with us. So bring their individuality, but be a part of the group. Yes, right. and we are. We will. We're creating an Asian American sensibility. We're creating this, this great salad of um, where we respect each other's cultures and we learn from each other and and we we incorporate that into what we do. Well, let's look forward a moment. Um, Thirty-five years have brought ACV and Wu Art to some extent, and a few less years than thirty-five, but. It's brought ACV an extraordinary amount of success, a very broad scope. Tell me about the next 35 years. I hopefully will be here. I mean, on the planet, I think I will. And you have um, many, we have new generations coming up who are interested in telling their stories. We've always had a for youth, by youth um, film program in the festival, and we want young people to come and to, and to see that. We want people to bring their summer school classes to see that, to see that, yes, there are people out there who, who look like you, who are your age, who are telling stories, and you could be doing that too. At that moment, at those moments when things are a little shaky, John has been a real strength consistently. He has come in and been, in, at times, a hero. But I think the thing that he has stuck to, besides the obvious, you know, the expression, independent film, Asian, Asian American expression, media expression, is that he is very aware that what he is doing is for the upcoming generations.